going to start in about two minutes, about two minutes. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. It's great to have everybody here. Welcome to everybody online. I hope you're comfortable at home. Uh, we're all together. You know, unfortunately, a lot of uh, churches are closing down for in-person worship, but we're not one of them. We're staying open. Uh, thank God we have the social distancing. We have the right setup to stay open. And uh, those of you who are, are watching, if you ever feel you want to come in person, uh, I think the camera may have just shown that we are socially distanced. The one thing we do ask, though, that everybody has to wear a mask before, during, and after worship. And I realize, I think for most people, if I want to say this, if you come and there's a health condition, some reason you cannot wear it the whole time, if you need to step out into the gathering area for a few moments, feel free to do that. But for us to maintain uh, the integrity of what we're doing here health-wise, we need to have the social distance, the mask, and then Mark Klein sanitizes this room every week, so I know there's no virus in here. So, uh, so this is a very safe atmosphere, and we're just thankful to God that we can remain open, that we can be available for those who want to come in person, as well as be online for all of you. So I really thank the Lord we have a great situation to, to worship him and to stay together. First thing we want to do today is light our Advent candle. As you know, we're in the second Sunday of Advent leading up to Christmas itself. Our scripture is from Isaiah. In the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged uh, places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So we're relighting the first Advent candle and now the, uh, uh, the second uh, candle. Today we relight the candle of hope and expectation that this candle remind us of the great hope we have in Christ the Messiah and God's promises. As we light the candle of preparation and peace, let it, let it remind us to prepare our hearts for the coming of Christ. Father, guide us in our confession of our sins. We know that in the greatness of your love, you've promised to forgive us. Cleanse us as we prepare our lives to once again welcome Jesus into our hearts, into our world. This we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. <clears throat>
You've been walking the same old road, miles and miles. You've been hearing the same old voice telling the same old lies. If you're trying to fill the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, save and he's a prison shaking savior. You got chains, he's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of day, the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. We've all run, no, no, things ain't right. There's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel low. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify, testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. You feel lost, he's a way maker. You need freedom, save him. He's a prison shaking savior. You got change, he's a chain breaker. If you need freedom, save him. He's a prison shaking savior. You got change. He's a chain breaker. Amen. He is a chain breaker. And that's why we come to the Lord today. Because we know that he looks at each of our lives and knows what each of us needs. If there's any chains in there, he can break them. You know, what, I, what Eric and I like to do during Advent is always have a couple guest speakers, and today, uh, we're welcome back. Uh, we always glad to have her. That's Candy. she come up and share a message with us today.
morning. <laughs> get the mic on, get the mask off. <laughs> I'm very happy to be here, and I want to wish everybody a happy Advent. And what a marvelous beginning song. Like Pastor Mike said, the chain breaker. Amen. So this morning we're going to be talking about the scripture that introduces the story in Matthew's Gospel of the Magi. It's a pretty long scripture, so I'm going to read it for the most part and ask you to join me at the end, and I'll tell you when to come in. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. Now would you join me for the rest? After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, and frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Long but beautiful scripture, amen? So the first thing we're going to talk about is trusting the journey. You know, my wonderful husband, Bob, has been sick for almost 10 years now. In the beginning, it was very hard for both of us, and we had been together at a gift shop one day, and I saw this plaque, and it had a picture of a bird, and the bird did not have feathers, but the body of the bird was made out of different quilted fabric, and there was a saying at the bottom that said, trust the journey, and that really helped me focus on what was important and reminded me so much of having faith in God when we look at this journey that the Magi made. So we're pretty familiar with the Magi in general. We know that they came out of probably Babylon or the land in the east, and that they were uh, priestly uh, astronomers that served the royal court in Babylon. So they were familiar with astronomy. They were familiar with natural sciences and with medicine. And because they were so scholarly, they were also familiar with the teachings of the Hebrew scriptures. There were Israelites that had not returned to Palestine after the exile, and some had stayed in Babylon and had created centers of learning. And so the Magi, because they were so scholarly, were familiar with the prophecies, and Matthew's gospel is especially tuned into the presentation of Jesus being the fulfillment of those prophecies. And so they were excited by the scriptures, knowing that this ruler was going to come out of Judea. And then they were also, you know, guided by the formation of this new star. But the journey they made was really extraordinary. And they, you know, gave themselves over to trusting that. It's a nine, about a 900 mile journey to go from Babylon to Bethlehem. And they didn't just go to the airport and get on Southwest and fly to Florida. <laughs> you know? They had a lot of logistics besides 
you know, to prepare for that great distance. They had, of course, camels, and they, it wasn't just the three kings. You know, it, in the east, they even believed that there were 12 magi that gathered together and went. In the west, we, um, we used the idea of three and made them kings because of the kingly gifts. But so there's, there's the magi, there's the people that take care of the animals, there's the people that um, gather all the provisions together, there's the people that are cooking. I'm sure there were a few women that were doing the laundry. Can you think men would do laundry for three months? I mean, so they're making this long trip. They would have gone up the Euphrates Valley, and then they would have crossed over areas in the Middle East, which would be a rugged terrain. And then they would have headed south towards, you know, the city of Jerusalem. And that, and that was where they were headed. And they had one goal. And scripture tells us their goal was they wanted to find the king of the Jews. So admirable to remind us, you know, that no matter what our circumstances, and we all have circumstances, we have a collective circumstance right now with the pandemic. And that is the goal to seek the king of the Jews and to trust God on the journey. So in addition to the commitment that they made, they were also guided by the star of Bethlehem. And the star of Bethlehem, astronomers today can go back and extrapolate out constellations that happened long, long time ago. So around the year 4 BC, there was a conjunction of planets it would have been maybe uh, at least two or three planets coming together that they feel was, you know, probably what has referred to in the scriptures as uh, in the book of Numbers, it talks about the star that will come out of Jacob and a scepter will rise out of Israel. So these wise men, the astronomers, when they saw this constellation, it was like you know, sort of a confirmation on top of the scriptures that they were already familiar with, that this is where they wanted to, you know, travel. I, I, uh, as I was studying this story, I uh, was surprised that on the news one night, they said this year on December 21st, and maybe some of you heard this, there's going to be a conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn, and that some people call that the Star of Bethlehem. So if we have clear skies over Lake Erie that night, <laughs> we may be able to see it. But their hearts were moved to follow this star. I think the other lesson that is in this is that, you know what, they lost sight of the star when they got close to Jerusalem. And it makes me think about the difference between King Herod, who is really not Jewish, and probably very threatened when he heard they were looking for the king of the Jews because he knew he was a, a fraud, but he was in that position, and the Magi. So you have Herod, who loves power, and you have a group of people that are searching for the power of love. So it's something for us to reflect on this Advent in our own lives. But at the same time, I know... Um, I was, uh, I've taken up a little bit of painting in my old age, and uh, I was inspired to uh, do a painting of the Star of Bethlehem. I mean, this is really beautiful. But in mine, I have a star up in the one corner, but then instead of doing the desert scene, I did kind of a turbulent ocean, and I have a sailboat, and the sailboat is heading towards the Star of Bethlehem. So I took my painting when it was finished, and I took myself over to Office Max, and I said, you know what, I would like to make this painting into a Christmas card for my brothers and sisters and my children. And um, they said, no problem, so they fixed that up for me. And then on the inside, I used the scripture from verse 10 that said, um, when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. Well, my one sister gave me a call, and she said, well, I really like the picture, but I don't understand inside. It says, when they saw the stew, they were overjoyed. <laughs> I said, no, I said, that's my curse F. It's supposed to be the star. <laughs> so we are able to reflect in the light of Christ the symbols that we see 
in the star of Bethlehem, to move in our own life according to the light of the Lord Jesus. And then the other thing I was thinking about was the presentation of gifts. So in the presentation of gifts, there's like this parade of gifts. And in the Middle East at that time, in ancient days, when a male child, sorry ladies, when a male child was born, there was rejoicing in the family, there was rejoicing in the whole community. And it was customary that anybody that wanted to could come and see the baby, even on the day of birth, and they would generally bring presents with them. And so that's why it was so acceptable to have the shepherds coming in from the fields and being out in the grass and with the animals, and they could just parade in and worship the Lord Jesus. And it was also very acceptable to have the magi, who were Gentiles. They really were, you know, from a pagan court, but they were given the wisdom to look for the king of the Jews. And so they were allowed to pray to him. And we're very familiar with the three gifts that they brought and how they represent um, a kingly, you know, adoration and veneration. So the gold, of course, you know, was very valuable. And then the frankincense and myrrh were coming from plants that are generally found in that what we call the Middle East today, but also India. So we're not quite sure how far maybe some of these wise men were really traveling to get there. And we are very also grateful and familiar with the gift we receive, our salvation. The Savior has been born unto us. But then I was also thinking about the great wonder of God the Father and what gifts he presented to Jesus when he was born. So we filled the whole sky with angels that were singing. And he flung a miraculous star in the sky to illuminate things to the birth of his only begotten son. He saved Jesus from assassination by Herod. He gave him parents that were loving and caring for him and brave enough to go into the land of Egypt when they were called to do so. So we have all these wonderful gifts, and of course, in turn, it's the time of year when we can say, what gift am I bringing? But we want to underscore all these different things to reflect on this morning by the celebration of joy that comes to our hearts when we look at the Christmas message and what Jesus has done for us. And so when we look at you know, the very beginning about trusting the journey, then in this celebration of joy, we know that from John's gospel, Jesus is the way. And so we know that that journey is ours to make, and we are never alone, and we are never without the resources to make that journey. And then we also know, when we look at the star of Bethlehem from the gospel of John, that Jesus is the light of the world. And we will never be left in the darkness. We will always have a savior to guide us, a chain breaker to help us through. And then with the parade of gifts, what greater gift than to be a part of the Christian family, here a body of Christ, whether we're here this morning or at home, and to be part of the family of the whole world, the family of man that Jesus is reaching out to, to bring everyone home and everyone united. So I would just ask now that we stop for a minute and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the teaching of your scripture and for the coming of our Lord Jesus. We thank you that we have been counted among your family, and we thank you that you are cradling us through your grace and your wisdom to celebrate this Christmas as a Christmas of joy and hope like never before. Amen. I love that Candy ended her message with the celebration of joy. And we're going to sing a song that has 
celebration of joy, the celebration that he reigns, that God is our king and our savior. And we have our special um, friend today, Anthony. This is Ryan's friend, and he's joining us today. And doesn't he have an awesome voice? He's pretty amazing. <laughs> so we're so thankful Thanks, everybody. that he's here. It's really beautiful to be here, so I'm so glad I'm here. So, um, all right, here we go. Is the song of the redeemed rising from the African plague? Is the song of the forgiven drowning out the Amazon rain? The song of Asian believers filled with God's holy fire. It's every tribe, every tongue, every nation. A love song born of a grateful choir. It's all God's children singing glory, glory. the four winds caught up in the heavenly sound let praises echo from the towers of cathedrals to the faithful gathered underground of all the songs sung from the dawn of creation some were meant to persist of all the bells rung from a thousand steeples, none rings truer than this. It's all God's children singing glory, glory. Hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. It's all God's children singing glory, glory. It's all God's children sing, glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns. And all the powers of darkness tremble at what they've just heard. Because all the powers of darkness can't drown out a single word. All God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns. All God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah. God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns, all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, all God's children singing glory. children singing glory glory hallelujah he reigns thank you
because that Jesus who was born 2,000 years ago continues to reign and be in our midst. We're able to pray together and come before him this morning. So please stand as you're able and let us pray together our table prayer. Blessed be you, O Lord, our God, as we celebrate Jesus coming to us, Jesus becoming one with us, that we might become one with you. This gift of yours is so deep, so full, it offers to all people the joy of everlasting life with you. Little though we are, great God, you have not forgotten or rejected us. You gave us Jesus to guide and guard us and hold us safely in your heart. You gave us Jesus as our friend and savior. Great and wonderful are you, O Lord, for your word remains with us, a light to our eyes, a song in our heart. Your word remains with us, our hope and courage in the midst of all life's troubles. Your word remains with us through the breaking of the bread. Remember how Jesus, when his final hour was near, gathered with his friends for one last meal. Remember how he took bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body broken for you. Remember how he took wine, blessed it, gave it to his disciples saying, this is my blood shed for you and for all people. Do this in memory of me. Then to show his love for you and us, he declared a new covenant between you and us. As we wait in joyful hope for the final fulfillment of your promise, we bring to you our broken selves to be your faithful sons and daughters accepting our offering, which we make with humble and contrite hearts through the heart of Jesus, our Lord. Therefore, with immense confidence in your goodness, we ask you, send your spirit upon our leaders, the leaders of our church and the leaders of our world. Grant them light to see your truth and courage to follow your way. Send your spirit upon us, our families and our friends, and upon all who suffer in any way. Grant patience, courage, hope, and peace that we may all grow in trust and love for you and for each other. Send your spirit upon our troubled world. Enlighten and free all people from any injustice and bondage to sin. Take away the songs I sing Take away all the lie And all the songs you let me write Does the man I am today Say the words you need to say Let them see you But thank you for bringing us to this table on this morning. Lord, we 
once again celebrate this Advent season, preparing for celebration of your birth. We know, Lord, you're born into each of our hearts when we say yes to you. Each and every day, we welcome you. And we come to this table, Lord, we know that you nourish us with the very real presence of you in our lives. We thank you for your word in scripture. We thank you for the shared truth among us. We thank you, Lord, that you always surround us with your presence and love and never leave us alone. Even when we walk away at times, Lord, you draw us back to you. And for that, we are grateful. As you came into this world, you come into our hearts each and every day as we begin a new day, as we welcome you and trust that you will be seen through each of us in the way we treat others, the way we care for others, the way we speak to others, in our patience and understanding. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to share your presence each and every day in this troubled world. Forgive us, Lord, for our own selfishness and self-centeredness at times when we forget that. But again, thank you for bringing us back now to you. And together we pray the words that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. For those of you at home, if you take bread and wine, for all of those of us here, if you remain standing until you receive communion, we will come to you. I'm finding myself at a loss for words And the funny thing is It's okay The last thing I need Is to be heard But to hear What you would say Word of God speak, would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty, to be still and know you're in this place, please let me stay and rest in your home. Word of God, speak. I'm finding myself in the midst of you, beyond the music. Beyond the noise, all that I need is to be with you and in the quiet. I hear your voice, word of God speak. Would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see? Your majesty to be still and know you're in this place. Please let me stay and rest in your holiness. Word of God speak. Would you pour down my grave, washing my God 
I'm finding myself at a loss for words And the funny thing is, it's okay The Lord always wants us to come to him with our needs and needs of others, and we got a long list today. As you know, there's been an explosion of COVID, and uh, a lot more intentions have been coming in with people um, going through this. The first person I want to mention, though, is Mary Ann Palumbo, because her dear mother, Mary D'Agostino, went home to the Lord at age 98 uh, a few days back. There will be no service at this time, but there will be something in May, and I'll let you know when that is. We want to pray for the following people. <clears throat> for Kurt battling COVID. For Devin Jarvis, a healing from cancer. For Carol Matetic, who is Cheryl, uh, Cheryl's mother. She's at the nursing home, <clears throat> Brookdale, up by Pine Ridge, and uh, they've had a quite a few COVID cases. She does not have it, so we're praying for protection for her, <coughs> excuse me, and for healing for all the others. For Bob Stagura, <coughs> excuse me, I don't have COVID. That was, uh, he's been in the hospital <coughs> and is doing better. Uh, two relatives of Gil and Jean Aspinwall, John and Bob, pray for both of them. <coughs> for a relative of Janet Sullivan, Lily, recovering from COVID. From the stepson of Mary Ellen Strong, recovery from COVID, his name is David. <clears throat> For Ginny Clark, the sister of Claire Ritchie, who has serious cancer, Claire is going down to spend quite a bit of time with her in Florida. For Carol Daria, going through knee surgery this week. For the son of Beth Clayton, Jeff, with COVID, happens to be a veterinarian also. We pray for Pastor Eric's dad, just turned 82, protection for him. So for all these people, Lord, and all the many others that we are aware of who are sick from all kinds of things, and especially for the great number suffering now <clears throat> with COVID, we lift them up to you and trust that your healing hand be upon them, each and every person. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. We are um, making some plans for Christmas Eve, um, as I put out in the call this week. Right now, our schedule is the same as always, 4 o'clock and 10 o'clock in the evening on Christmas Eve, which, believe it or not, is two weeks from Thursday. Hard to believe, isn't it? Uh, it's hard to believe. This year has been un really unreal. Um, we have a sheet out there. If, if you have an idea which service you're coming to, would you mark it down how many are coming if you don't know yet, don't worry about it. We want to make sure that we have enough social distance. If we, were, if we needed to add a service, we would. We hope we don't have to. But for the safety of everyone, we will if we see there's so many people that we can't maintain <coughs> this distance. So either call me, call Eric, or mark that sheet out there when you know your plans, and we'll, we'll plan accordingly. I'm pretty confident the two services will work, but because we're going to be, you know, we're live streaming. But for those of you who want to be here that night, uh, we want to make sure that everything is safe for you. Thank you to those of you who have been sending in uh, 
your donations, of whether the Christmas collection or regular donations, we appreciate that. Uh, you've been great this year. It's a very unusual year, and you've been very generous, allowed us to not only maintain, but to make a lot of improvements and to, to move forward. So we'll just keep you abreast of everything that's going on. There is a cancellation of, on December 17th, which is still a week, two, a couple weeks away. The Bible study Christmas party has been canceled. That was for the 17th. They just wanted you to know that. So please stand as you're able. And let us pray our blessing together. May the Spirit of the Lord be always upon us. May the blessings of the Lord always surround us. And may our hearts know his abiding peace. May our God, who is our light and life, bless us always. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared. The soul felt its worth, the thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn for
praise god thank you anthony